Hello everyone, my name is Edir Canalias and I'm going to explain my research with the name of Music Therapy as an Intervention Strategy for Children with ADHD. For the moment, the Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, generally known by its acronym ADHD, has been classified as one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders among young societies, representing the 5% of children and youth population worldwide. Concerning the distribution of this disorder between genders, there are more girls who suffer from ADHD than boys. As expected, it is not a coincidence. As a general rule, girls tend to be educated with discipline, be forced to fulfill a certain number of rules from a very young age. On the contrary, boys receive a higher level of freedom. Leaving aside the genetic factor, this distinction can generate a certain psychological level of anxiety in girls, which can easily lead them to suffer from this disorder. During the first years of parenthood, couples tend to assume their children will meet the requirements established by our actual societies. Why am I highlighting this sentence in concrete? The treatment that the family offers to their son or daughter is one of the most important variables in the overall development of the infant. In fact, the recovery of the child can depend on it. According to the Manual Diagnóstico y Estadístico de los Trastornos Mentales, the diagnosis consists in the analysis of three parameters, inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. Depending on the prevalence of each one, a child is classified into the subtype of predominantly inattentive, predominantly hyperactive impulsive, or the mixed one, which means the child suffers from inattention and hyperactivity impulsivity. There are many options and beliefs about which is the best strategy to deal with it, to put an end to it. As a consequence, there exist endless discussions between professionals in this field who defend different or even opposite opinions. Many studies claim that children should take medication because it can reduce ADHD symptoms, and others in contraposition who firmly believe that those medicines are drugs that should not be given to children because of the side effects that can harm the kid's health. Certainly, these two opposite perceptions encompass two of the most common ways to react for those who find themselves in this context. However, there exists a third type of reaction, which is not used by many people. This is the alternative therapies, among which this study will focus on music therapy. Trying to give the most excellent and clearest meaning to this couple of words, Rodriguez defined it as the use of music or musical elements such as the sound, rhythm, melody or harmony to facilitate and promote communication, learning, self-expression, organization skills and satisfy physical, emotional, mental, social and cognitive needs. According to Briseño, music therapy is the therapeutic alternative with more probabilities of success for students with ADHD, declaring that it increases the children's self-esteem, emotional health and also their social ties. Music therapy covers many strategies of different characteristics. Among this long list of options, this investigation will focus on examining the benefits of the mix of two known methodologies, the performance of a musical instrument and self-instruction training. One of the most questioned and studied aspects about therapy in general is deciding whether it's better to put these sessions into practice in groups or individually. Some evidences have shown a clear improvement in the behavior of children who have received individual music therapy sessions. However, given the properties of the two chosen methodologies, in addition to the desire of achieving the integration of the children affected in the classroom, my recommendation would be to involve all the students of a whole class in it. It could be performed during music sessions, although it's important to make sure the teacher is qualified to carry out activities of this nature. Focusing on the methodology itself, at the moment of applying music therapy to treat ADHD, many erroneous beliefs arise. Playing a slow piece of music to a child has long been considered a correct way to beneficially treat this disorder. 
However, not only has this tactic been proven to encourage the increase of anxiety levels of the child, but shown that the ones that can truly help children to fight against the symptoms of ADHD are those songs considered stimulating and of a lively nature. After making this brief presentation of the basic knowledge which should be taken into consideration during these sessions, the attention of this investigation will be focused on the mix of the two strategies which I have already presented as my music therapy proposal to be introduced in the schools. In 1971, Michevam elaborated the hypothesis that hyperactive children, due to their impulsiveness, were unable to adapt to the traditional education model. It was the same year when he and Goodman developed the self-instructional training, which is made of two types of modeling, overt and covert. Its most important goal resides in interrupting the infinite chain of incorrect thoughts that the impulsive child elaborates before solving a problem and replacing it for a useful sequence of thoughts that can help in the process of problem solving. This self-instruction training was designed to be carried out during a session in a total of five phases which show the attempt of moving on from improving mechanisms of external control to the development of internal control mechanisms. Villar explains them briefly. The first one is cognitive modeling. The therapist models instructions aloud while the child listens and observes. The second one, external guide, the therapist verbalizes the self-instructions that the child must perform. The third one, manifest self-guidance, the child performs some tasks, verbalizing the self-instructions out loud to himself. The fourth one, attenuated over self-guidance, the child whispers self-instructions to himself at the same time he performs them. And the last one, Cover self-instruction, the child uses an internal language to silently guide his behavior. Now it is the moment of finding the solution to how it is possible to connect the action of playing an instrument with this training. First of all, before putting this strategy into practice, it is important to rule out the use of wine instruments. The exchange of words between the therapist and the students in class will not be possible. Moreover, I would also recommend taking into consideration leaving aside the drums or any electronic instrument that produces loud sounds and may make difficult as well the exchange of messages. Following the steps of the self-instruction training and introducing musical instruments to the activity, the first quality the therapist will put into practice is the patient's attention span, in this case the one of all the members in the class. What refers to the second part of the activity, it has the objective to master both skills, the capacity to maintain the attention on the teacher's words and combine this with the capacity to reproduce them with music. In the third step, the only existing participation comes from the group of students. Think, say and do are the main steps students have to follow. With some practice, the objective of this step is to make children capable of doing the three actions at the same time. To conclude, children must be capable of keeping silent and not externalizing their thoughts. I feel forced to comment that this last step may be easier or more difficult for children depending on their personality or their characteristics, not in the capacity to concentrate or not. Although there are not studies or research that demonstrate the benefits of my specific proposal, the combination of these two methodologies, taking into account what has already been mentioned above, it can be said that this combination is effective when it comes to promoting attention, reducing impulsivity and hyperactivity, controlling anger and introducing the children in the classroom as part of the crowd. In other words, appropriate to the context of treating ADHD in school-age children.